Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. So in our previous video, we created our Cosmos DB and our test key space. And in this video, we're gonna create our table and then connect that table to our Blazor WebAssembly application. If you haven't seen how to do the Cosmos part, make sure to check out my other video that is up here in the cards and down in the description below. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other videos. So we're gonna create a new table we're going to call it, we're going to use our existing key space and we're going to call it weather. And then here we're going to have the date when, when we think that weather is going to be. Then the year that that date is, we use that for partition keys. So basically Cassandra breaks everything into partition keys and cluster keys. So basically you have the, the partition key that are basically are kind of like folders that then each worker can spread the work and each worker sees one folder and then you have inside the folder you might have indexes that make it easier to kind of find the, the information so the first primary key is the partition key you want it to be something that will divide the data kind of equally so like it's not loaded a lot in one partition then not much in the other partitions and then the cluster keys is stuff that you're going to be doing a lot of comparisons for for like less than or equal or stuff like that so in this case we're just going to do a year since Every year is supposed to have the same weather forecasts and then weather date just because we're going to be retrieving like data that is greater than this date less than this date you could also technically add other cluster keys such as temperature since you might be doing a lot of comparisons of like let me know what days were higher than 20 degrees and so on and in here we're going to just use the throughput that we had already created we're not going to provision dedicated throughput for this table and once that's created we're gonna go through the code and in here basically is the regular blazor web assembly application that has the fetch data weather pretty vanilla didn't change much other than i added the year so i made it year date time now then i added some stuff into the startup so here i created a memory cache that one i use for my key vault service if you haven't seen that video Make sure to check it out. So we're gonna actually be using Keyboard to save the Cosmos DB password just because we shouldn't have passwords in code. And I have already covered that in the previous video, so I'm not gonna really cover the service. I just copied and pasted and all the code is down in the GitHub in the description down below. So if you just wanna check out the code, make sure to check it out. And I created a DB service, that that's the one that actually takes care of all the database stuff. So we're gonna go to the database service and we're gonna start with the initialization. So first I'm getting all the locations. So basically, where's the password in the key vault? What username we were using for the cluster? What a cluster name? What a key space? And then the password, I'm getting it from key vault. You can get all this information on the quick start of, of your server or in the connection strings. So like, it'll give you all that information. You would just have to add it to your app settings except obviously the, the password location, that one is just what you named it in your key vault and your key vault is wherever you, you, you have it. So if we go back here, we're creating the Cassandra SSL options, basically kind of saying, hey, like we want you to validate the SSL certificate and make sure that is the server that we're trying to talk to. And I created a quick validate certificate that it will just check if there's any SSL policy errors, if they're if they're not, it returns true. If not, it returns false. And you have to pass that to the Cassandra function and they'll validate it for you. And then for set host name resolver, it actually uses the IP address of the cluster name. So you just pass the actual cluster name that they give you. So it's going to be like coding flamingo test server dot cassandra dot cosmos dot azure dot com. And it'll go get the IP address and do all that stuff for you. And then you start the cluster and you use the username and password the port that they give you, the contact point is basically your cluster name with the SSL options that we created up here. And then we do dot build and then we create a session which is basically connecting to that database. The Cassandra Nuget package that we're using uh, recommends making this a singleton. So it's very important that in the startup we are actually using this as a singleton. And this is the Nugget package that we're using it. I'll also put it down in the description so you can just grab it and, and install it. After we initialize that and we start the session, I map the tables. Once again, this only has to be done once, so we do it in the constructor. You're going to map each one of your tables to your classes. So it's not done 
automatically how you do it in EF Core that it just knows what is what. You have to kind of like pass it manually and say like the date is the column with the name weather date and the year is the column with the name year and the table name is weather and so you just have to kind of do this for each one of your uh, tables that you have in this case we only have one so it's not that long but this function can get very long that's why i pulled it out of the construction i just call it and once all that is done we just have the crude operations i didn't do the optic because i was lazy and it's basically the same as delete but other than that i'm just going to go through the crude operations so in the session i'm just getting the table weather forecast and since we already mapped it it knows which table it is and i'm saying where i dot date is greater or equal than date time dot now and since i'm actually not passing all the keys that i have to pass such as the primary key the year and this I have to pass the allow filtering, which basically is kind of like saying like, hey, I know that this is not going to be super efficient, but it's small data or I'm returning a big size of the data because this is basically going to query the whole thing in the database. And then the database is going to select the ones that you need back and they will send them back to you. So it's a big task for the database. So in here, by saying allow filtering, you are kind of telling the database, yes, I'm cool with you doing that. And then you can do execute or execute async. This one I just did execute just so you can see that you can do both, but I would prefer actually you doing execute async just so that thread can do other stuff while you're waiting for this stuff. Then I just convert it to a list just to return it as a list where you could actually return it as an I enumerable and you, you would be fine. For the delete, in this one I am using an async section and basically I same get the table this one I'm using both, so I, you have to use your partition key and then you can use your cluster key to say like, so in here you can see like, I want them all to be in this year, so 2021, and that the date is lar it's larger than today. So like we're deleting any forward looking forecasts. Once again, in this one I left the allow filtering, but I could actually remove it then delete and then execute async. And this will do it all in the database. So no information has come back to the server. So then we're going to look at add value. So add value, basically you prepare the statement. Um, this one, actually, I should probably move somewhere else because you want to prepare the statement only once that basically this is, this tells the node package to kind of like prepare, optimize the best way to, to kind of create this statement. And then whenever you're going to use it, it'll bind your things. To this question marks so for example year year date date summary summary temperature 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 so this one you only have to call once and then you can call this in a for loop which is basically what we do here and here i just kind of add them and then i do a task when all a uh, big difference between entity framework and this package is that this one is thread safe so you can actually call multiple things at once and you can just await them at the end so you can send multiple requests at once and your database will manage them and then return it all so that kind of covers the database interaction and then just quickly since i know a lot of people can look at this tutorials just because i do a lot of laser stuff i'm just going to show the controller i just basically created a add entry http get that just calls the add values async with random values and then a delete forecast that will delete the forecasts and then the get forecast so i modified that one instead of doing some random stuff i actually changed it to get the forecast from the database and then here i'm injecting the database service and then the fetch data i changed it basically it's the same i just added two buttons at the bottom that is one for adding data and the other one for deleting data data so now Let's just run it and see how it goes. All right, so if we go to the fetch data, it's going to go to the server and it's going to be empty since we just created a table. So now it, it went got, there's no data, so we're going to add data. It's going to add five. And as you can see, it was able to add them and display them very quick. And then we can add another five if we want and so on. And we can also delete the data. And that's basically how you do crude operations on Cosmos DB Cassandra using .NET. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.